Hello, beautiful people, and welcome back uh, to another edition of my daily Rona report. Obviously, it hasn't been daily. Uh, I believe the last one I might have done was on Wednesday. Uh, not real sure. You know, government this year took Friday off. Um, I just had a lot going on with my car on Thursday, and then Saturday and Sunday, just uh, decided to take the weekend to myself uh, without doing this report. So. Back at it again today with the daily Rona report. Uh, I'm going to try to keep today's a little brief. Uh, just try to touch on some real important things, kind of move through, uh, give you a shorter version for today. So first and foremost, we'll go ahead and jump right in. Uh, the first thing we'll talk about is the local numbers. So uh, for those that don't know, I'm a student at EKU. So right now I live in Richmond, uh, Madison County. Uh, so in Madison County, there are now 30 confirmed cases and one death from uh, COVID-19 or coronavirus. And then go ahead and go over to Fayette. As you can see, Clark County also 20 confirmed, zero deaths. And then Fayette County, which is the closest uh, large county in Kentucky to Richmond where I'm located. So Fayette County has 295 confirmed cases and nine deaths. Um, that is the numbers for Madison Clark and Fayette. So that being said, that's your, your local numbers. Uh, like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to move through pretty quickly today. Just got to give you guys a quick bullet points of what's important. So uh, next, up next, something that Governor Bashir starts with every day. Um, for those, if this is your first time watching, uh, I pull these stats from Governor Bashir or Uncle Andy, as Kentuckians like to call him, uh, from his daily press conference, kind of give you the quick bullet points, rapid fire kind of approach uh, without going too rapid, obviously. Uh, give you the information from that and then the numbers from around the nation as well. So Governor Bashir starts with this every day. I'm not going to go through this in detail because I've done it several times. So if you want to read through this in detail, go ahead and pause the video now. Uh, read through that and then play it whenever you're ready. But uh, you see him stay healthy at home is obviously the big one, you know, don't leave unless you have to, essential items. It's one that he stresses daily. Uh, also for updates, you can go to kycovid19.ky.gov. Um, and again, if this is your first time watching, just know that any website I reference will be down below in the description for my YouTube channel. So. Uh, you can check them out there and get to where you need to go. Also, uh, you know, apply for benefits. Uh, if you are laid off, still apply for unemployment. I know it's backlogged. It's going to take a while for you to get your stuff straightened out and everything uh, because of how many people have to file. But you can do that at kcc.ky.gov. All right, so moving on along. The next thing we're going to talk about is testing. So drive through testing sites, there are a ton of them now. As you can see, uh, I believe it's 17 total. Uh, it's actually more than that. So it looks like there are, um, this is for May 4th through the 8th, so this this week. Uh, looking like 18 sites actually. So 18 drive through testing sites as you can see there, you know, uh, Ashland Community and Technical College, you have Bracken County Health Department, Murray Callaway Community Hospital, uh, Tiebreaker Park in Christian County, you have Bluegrass Community and Technical College in Lexington, also in Lexington is the Walgreens site uh, on Executive Drive, and then in Louisville you have Shawnee Park as well as Walmart, in uh, Jessamine County you have the Jessamine County Health Department, St. Joseph of London, the Buffalo Trace District Health Department in Mason County. And then uh, I'm not sure what that Montgomery County one is. It just says Montgomery County, uh, but you have the address there. And then Odom County Health Department, Pendleton County High School, Primary Care Centers of Eastern Kentucky in Perry County, and St. Clair Healthcare in Rowan County, Trigg County Primary Care Clinic, and South Warren High School in Bowling Green. So lots of sites there. Um, if you're not sure how to register for an appointment in any of these sites, you can go to kycovid19.ky.gov. Governor Bashir did state that 
<clears throat> all the requirements and what you need to do to register for these sites are on there so you can just go to that website and see what you need to do as for the Kroger sites these are the Kroger sites for this week uh, uh, the Louisville, Bowling Green, Ashland, and Lexington. Uh, these sites, the Kroger sites are open to anyone. Anyone can register. You don't have to have symptoms, don't have to be a healthcare worker, anything like that. But uh, Lexington, Bowling Green, and Louisville are all booked through the rest of the week. But the Ashland Community College, uh, Governor Bashir said that there are about 100 uh, spots left for Wednesday and about 300 left for Thursday, as it, that one's not open on Friday. So. If you're in the Ashland area, you can register for that one. Uh, I talked about the Walgreens site as well. That um, that Walgreens site in Lexington, um, which the address, the email, the website address for that will be down below if you need to register for that. But that Walgreens one is actually uh, for only for healthcare workers, first responders and people that are over 18 with symptoms. So that one's not open to everybody, but it is open seven days a week. I believe it's like eight to five or something like that. Uh, but you can go to that website down below and check it out uh, if you fall into that category and wanna throw that one as well. So Governor Bashir also talked about a new partnership, which uh, drive-through testing, uh, anyone can qualify. You don't have to have symptoms or anything like that. It's appointment only, no cost. It's at the Kenton, Boone County, um, in that area, uh, there's the address for it in Erlanger, Kentucky. This is going to be May 11th through the 15th, so next week from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, you can call that number, 1-800-737-7900, for an appointment starting this Friday. Uh, so that's going to be the 8th, I believe, Friday is. Um, yeah, so Friday, May 8th, you can start calling and making an appointment there. They also have uh, physician consult testing, so not drive-through testing, but uh, this is for symptomatic patients. It will be evaluated as appointment only. That one, fees do apply, and there are multiple physician offices, urgent cares, and dedicated respiratory clinics that are uh, being used for that. Uh, testing at all St. Elizabeth Urgent Care is, uh, it's at dedicated respiratory clinic. So it's, it's all going to be St. Elizabeth Urgent Care and Respiratory Clinics. There's five locations for that, and it's open 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, so you can, uh, and then there's some other Northern Kentucky community testing locations that you see. You know, Bluegrass Urgent Care has four, the Christ Hospital Physicians, and Health Point Family Care has another three locations that you can <clears throat> get tested for coronavirus at and again if you didn't get that number while it's up there i will have it in the description below so that you can get it there um, governor Bashir also talked about how the white house is mandated for banks to open that at least two percent of the population has to be getting tested uh, governor Bashir stated that he believes we're going to get at least three percent of kentucky and kentuckians to be tested so uh, definitely meeting that benchmark and exceeding it a little bit as well. So the next thing that he talked about was the healthcare so phase two reopening uh, it's going to take place on May 6th so that's this Wednesday obviously there's going to be requirements uh, you see the the rules there so you know telework when possible um, those are just the healthy at work. Uh, they also have the industry specific guidance that each of these offices and things have been issued that they will have to follow because that is mandated. But as you can see, things that open on Wednesday, um, outpatient gastro gastrointestinal procedures, radiology procedures, so invasive and non-invasive, diagnostic non-urgent cardiac procedures, outpatient orthopedic procedures, outpatient ophthalmological procedures, outpatient ENT procedures, and outpatient dental procedures. So a big thing that they've stressed is still social distancing, so there's not going to be any waiting rooms for any of this stuff. 
You can see a lot of them are outpatient, so they want to get it done and get you out of there. Don't want to keep you overnight or anything like that. Um, but that is the gist of that healthcare phase two. Also, phase three will be on May 13th, and phase four reopening will be on May 27th. So these are those 10 rules, uh, so I can give you a bigger picture of it um, for healthy at work. So obviously continue telework when possible. So if you can work from home, they want you to do that. Phase return to work, so only managers and stuff first. Not everybody coming back at once. Um, On-site temperature and health checks. So anybody entering the facility is going to get checked to make sure they don't have symptoms. Universal mask and any other necessary personal protective equipment. So everybody has to wear a mask. Uh, if you're working, you have to wear a mask. That stuff has to be available uh, and you have to have it on hand and then um, hand sanitizer as well it's over on the other side but uh, facilities places that are reopening have to have these things in order to reopen so closed common areas so like no waiting rooms cafeterias break rooms things like that uh, i already talked about the enforced social distancing so keeping six feet and then limit face-to-face -face meetings so even though you're in the same building uh, they want to do meetings like over the phone rather than everyone coming into the same room. Having sanitizer, hand wash stations, special accommodations. So, you know, people that are at vulnerable populations have to have special accommodations to accommodate those people to keep them from being at much as risk. And then a testing plan to have employees and uh, other people that are entering to be tested. As I talked about the personal protective equipment, so as you can see here, this is for um, facilities that do not have the masks. They can go to that website there and order the masks. I will have that in the description down below as well. And then to purchase hand sanitizer, they can get it from that website as well and purchase those. The government here did state that the masks are about $1 each through that website. So. Definitely, uh, <clears throat> you know, if you're the head of operations for any type of business that's trying to reopen, you don't have these uh, hand sanitizer and masks, you have to have those to reopen. So go to that website if you need to get them, go to those sites. And then last but not least, uh, before we get into the numbers, we'll talk about Healthy at work, phase one reopening. So these are the things that are reopening. So May 11th, which is Monday, a week from today, uh, manufacturing, construction, vehicle or vessel dealerships like boat, car dealerships, professional services at 50%. Um, they've been doing like at home, but now you can do in person at 50% of the normal volume. Horse racing with no fans and then pet grooming and boarding. So those are opening Monday and then May 20th, which is the following Wednesday, retail and houses of worship. Um, and then May 25th, which is going to be that following Monday after that, there will be 10 person or less social gatherings as well as barbers, salons, cosmetology, businesses and similar services. So this is all, all these have specific requirements for each type of business that they have to follow and they also <clears throat> have to make sure they're meeting the requirements and it's all based on not having a second spike so right now our numbers in terms of new cases has plateaued governor sure wants to keep it there if it begins to spike then things are probably going to get shut back down so you're going to want to follow these requirements to make sure we can try to get back to normal as soon as possible all right, and then um, I talked about this in my last report, which was on Wednesday, I believe. But uh, one thing that Governor Michelle talked about, so restaurants are not going to be in phase one uh, because it's kind of hard to wear a mask while you're eating. Uh, gyms are also not in phase one. Youth sports, not in phase one. They, uh, he did state that he hopes they'll be able to do those in early July, youth sports. Uh, Pools will not be in phase one or phase two just because it's an environment that it's really hard to control the transmission of COVID-19. And then summer camps 
are not in phase one, neither are daycare, but they do hope for those to be able to reopen in June. So now we'll talk about the numbers for COVID-19. So for Kentucky, uh, 163 new cases, bringing the total to 5,245 total cases with one of those being probable. That's out of 60,046 total tests. Um, there have been 1,529 people hospitalized. 333 are current, currently in the hospital, 174 currently in the ICU, and 1,921 people have recovered. There were eight new deaths today for Kentucky, uh, bringing the total deaths to 261. And then get the urgent or long-term care, rather, facilities up here. As you can see, there are now 139 deaths for the state of Kentucky in the long-term care facilities. So big portion of that 261 coming from long-term care. I usually give the percentages, but I failed to do that today. So I apologize, um, you know, 5,000 out of 60,000, that's roughly one twelfth. So not too bad considering that there's been 60,000 people tested and only one twelfth of them are confirmed um, to have COVID-19. And then uh, 1,921 out of that 5,245 have recovered. So that's roughly about 40% or so, uh, 35 to 40% somewhere in there. And then you have 139 out of 261. So that's over half of the total deaths are coming from long-term care facilities. So last but not least, uh, before I part with you, the numbers from around the nation. So the United States now has, uh, this is from John Hopkins University, of course, 1,172,670 confirmed cases with 67,682 deaths and 180,303 recoveries. So there are the developments from Governor Rashear and the numbers for the state of Kentucky, the nation, and Madison and Fayette County. So for your daily runner report, I'm Jordan. See you guys tomorrow.